Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, seriously. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Just had lunch. We're going to talk about analytics. We're all going to be asleep in 10 minutes, obviously. So demystifying network analytics. I, uh, just to give you a heads up, so I'm GT Hill from a company called Nyansa. You guys are not gonna have to listen to me for an hour. So I know you're excited about that now. I will be bringing up uh, the smart guy here. So when I think about analytics, so I joined Nyansa about a little over a year ago. Came from Ruckus, I didn't know anything about software analytics. And so I thought, okay, how, what is analytics in your life? Has anybody ever had Netflix tell you what to watch? You're like, hey, that was a pretty good thing. It worked out. Do you know that Netflix had a contest to get that? Netflix paid a million dollar contest to who could get the, the analytics engine to work the best to recommend you the shows you see today. And somebody won that. It was like, you know, judged and everything. So there's analytics that we see in our lives, but what we're gonna look at is how does it apply in your life as a network admin. So I want to find out who has been managing networks the longest. Lee? Lee? <laughs> Is he even here? Uh, Can he hear? He's managing a network right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what was the first network monitoring tool you used? What, ping? Someone just said ping? That's probably going to win. <laughs> NCCA? NCCA, S and I did. Okay, uh, when, what year time frame was that? 84. 84. Yes. Okay, you may be winning. <laughs> Three com wizard? So I heard the other day, what's up gold? Oh. Oh, Dude, that, I was like, wow, man, I haven't heard that in a while. Are they still in business? Uh, you guys, somebody still has that running? Was that, Com was that the guy from Comcast that just said that's what they're using still? No. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I had this epiphany. I was on a really long drive between Salt Lake City and Boise, Idaho for work. And I started thinking about network analytics and network monitoring and their history. Is there was a time when many of you may have managed a network without a network management system or a network monitoring tool. Is that a correct assumption? You probably did that. Today, what we found is that most people consider network management and monitoring a must-have product. Would you agree with that? You're so busy, you have to have some sort of product, a SolarWinds, a Prime, uh, uh, Airwave, something to help you manage your system. Where we're at, it, it kind of in, in Nyance's lifespan, is we are a nice to have. Most customers will say, we love what you do, it's definitely nice to have. But I was thinking about this, and I actually see that in the upcoming years, analytics is going to be a must-have. Because everything is getting more difficult, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So I just wanted to set the stage a little bit to bring up the guy that's going to do most of the talking. He can start walking now. <laughs> he wanted to stand right here. I'm saying I'm going to let him do it. So this is uh, Mr. Anand Srinivas. He's the CTO and co-founder of Nyansa. He's got a PhD from MIT. Usually I'd make fun of that, but today it's awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, in wireless? Yeah, wireless and algorithms. Wireless, seriously? Yeah. Dude, it's like you were born for this stuff, man. <laughs> anyway, please welcome Anand Srinivas. Here you go, sir. Thanks, guys. Okay, so the frame of reference I want to use for, for what I'm going to talk about is I'm sure you guys have heard other vendors talk about network analytics and just other things, systems talk about analytics. And, you know, one of the things is tools like this or solutions like Netflix or Google or companies like that, that's analytics, right? Intuitively, you kind of know that when Netflix is recommending you stuff to watch, you know, that something is going on, something magical. Right? Google is telling you, hey, if you leave for your meeting now, you know, it's going to take 45 minutes because it's seen the traffic, it knows where you're going to meet, and it's, it's sort of giving you that advice without any kind of prompting. That's analytics, right? And you know, when, when you think of something like, let's say, SolarWinds or Cisco Prime, SolarWinds is different from Netflix or Google or Amazon or something like that. Prime is different, right? Um, you don't think of networking solutions as analytics. 
And there's sort of a reason or an intuition why, and I'll sort of talk about what that dividing line is. But that's kind of the frame of reference that I, I want people to keep, where is this like Netflix? Is this like Google? Is this like Amazon, right? And what's that difference? So first off, let's, you know, analytics is useless unless it's solving an actual problem, right? So let's agree on what the problem is to try and somewhat narrow this conversation, right? So, you know, the way we see it, and hopefully for everybody in this room, um, the problem is the access network user experience of clients, right? So from a client being able to associate to an access point, to be able to connect, you know, get authenticated with, with Radius, get an IP address, DNS, and transmit out to the web or on-premise and use applications, right? That's kind of the point of a network. And um, that's, you know, getting a handle on that user experience is, is the problem, right? And so, you know, there, there's different elements to this. You know, there's the user devices, right? The clients, there's the infrastructure, there's the WAN, there's the application themselves, right? The next part of it is what does analytics do, right? Analytics takes, has an input, which is raw data, right? And makes sense of that data, right? And there's a lot of data on network, access networks, right? So to start with, the clients themselves are generating data. So actual network traffic. So these could be packets over 802.11, wireless packets. They could be packets over 802.3 or Ethernet packets as well, the wired clients, right? So there's actual network traffic and packets. There's synthetic traffic, right? So this could be, you know, some companies offer solutions where you deploy something on a client and it's running pings or something like that against servers or deploying something on um, like another AP, like a monitoring AP or whatever, right? That does synthetic testing or like synthetically connects to the wireless and test that out. So that's injecting traffic onto the network in order to get some kind of performance uh, information. So that's raw data. Now let's look at the infrastructure. There's raw data in the form of metrics from the infrastructure. So SNMP polling, all your network elements, right? Getting information that way. Your CLI, right? Getting information from there uh, in terms of elements. Um, log data from your firewall or your wireless LAN controller, your switches, all of that is raw data for, for this as well. Your WAN elements, right? So your routers that are, that are facing, facing the WAN. There's flow data, so net flow. Think about that, um, where traffic is going, what the next hop is, all that. Um, there's trace routes, right? So you can run trace routes and figure out what the WAN topology or the BGP topology is like, where the bottlenecks are, where the latency. Again, raw data, right? Um, finally, on the application side, um, there are APIs into certain application servers, right? So think Skype for Business as an example. They actually have something called the SDN API where the app server itself will tell you information about detailed call quality and things like that. Um, you can get logs from the application servers. You can get logs from Radius, DNS, DHCP servers as well, right? So all of this data, and the key is what do you do with that data? And what makes the solutions today not analytics? <laughs> and what is that dividing line between that and what you know, I'm gonna talk about as analytics? And as I said before, it's sort of like, what do you, what's different about the Googles, the Netflix, the Amazons, and so on, right? So let's start, you know, all, that, all those data sources on the left here, right? And what products, you know, let, let's start with like a first class of products, right? And so these could include, you know, synthetic testing products. So, you know, I'm not, um, I'll, I'll throw out examples as just examples. This isn't, you know, uh, a critique or anything like that. It's just saying that these products do monitoring or do they do certain things, but they're not doing analytics. So a synthetic testing product, you know, uh, you know an example of this might be Aruba Clarity or 7Signal, right, which will synthetically test wireless as well as, you know, other kinds of things. Your element management system or your network management system, right, like a Cisco Prime or um, an Aruba AirWave, right, uh, or even a SolarWinds, right? Um, on the NetFlow collector side, so think about a live action or a LandCope type product, right, which will collect NetFlow data from your routers and sort of uh, be able to show you things there. And then finally, DPI engines. So think about things like NetScout 
some of Fluke's products, um, Extra Hop, you know, products like that, where they basically take live packets and analyze that. But what do these products do with the data, right? What they, the, the main thing that they do is take this data and graph it for you, right? So they, they extract all of these raw metrics from this data. They keep that data over long term, average it, graph it. You're able to set thresholds, if you want, on that data to say, if this metric exceeds this value, send me an alert, right? Um, and so what, what I'm going to kind of qualify or you know, uh, classify that as, that's monitoring. And monitoring is not analytics. Right? Then what about the more advanced stuff, right? So monitoring is one thing, but it's not fair to say that you know, products today only do monitoring, right? Or they only do the graphing, right? So there is generation of heat maps, right? You know, by location and, and what's going on there. There's topology generation, right? Like how are the switches connected to each other? How do the APs hear each other? All of that kind of information. There is information about taking logs and indexing and making them queryable. So think Splunk, right? So Splunk is able to take logs from all your different servers and network elements or anything like that. And you can query for keywords. And you can actually have an app on top of that that takes what you query and then can graph and visualize that data. And you know, that's, that's kind of the final aspect of say, you know, rather than just graphing a metric, you can take that data and visualize it in different ways. Right? So is that analytics, right? And you know, what I would say is that it's, get, it's on the spectrum. It's definitely getting closer to analytics. But you know, it's more like initial summarization, visualization, queryability. But it's still not analytics, right? And so now you know, with that, let me kind of define what this mysterious, you know, at least our definition of what, what this mysterious analytics thing is. Right? And again, the frame of reference is, you know, how does this compare to Google, Netflix, Amazon, those kind of things? Right? So the first part of analytics um, is the ability to answer complicated, complex questions. Right? So you know, a, a networking example of this would be like a question like, you know, what percentage of Skype for Business call quality issues on the 10th floor of this building coincide with poor Wi-Fi or poor coverage or high interference or something like that? Right? And what's required here to answer a question like that, I'll, I'll get into more details in a second, but you need to collect, first of all, all the different data sources. And you need to correlate that together and basically make that queryable and visualizable. So it's sort of a step beyond, you know, let's say, Splunk, which is sort of in a siloed way taking data from like, the logs that you have and making that queryable, to taking data sources, correlating them together first, Right, with respect to the types of questions you want to answer, and then doing you know, correlation and indexing and queryability. But then probably you know, the bigger thing here is I don't even know that the 10th floor is, how would I even have known to ask that first question you know, about Skype for Business calls on the 10th floor? Maybe I, I have buildings that have 50 floors, and how do I know that the 10th is important? So probably the holy grail of analytics is you tell me. Right? I'm coming into this blind. You tell me and you recommend me things that I didn't even know what questions to ask and make it actionable. Right? Don't tell me something sort of abstract. So you know, an example here would be if you can mitigate DNS latency on VLAN 100, that's potentially 3,000 client hours of slow internet that you can mitigate. Right? You know, so the analogy here a little bit is you know, Netflix's recommendation engine, right? So you come into the product, into Netflix, and you turn it on, and it basically tells you, because you watched something else, here are some recommendations for you on, on thing, other things that you might be interested in, right? It's not, you wouldn't have known otherwise to go look at those movies, right? It's pulling that from somewhere, right? And, you know, that's what we want to bring to networking as well. Then finally, um, verify, right? So analytic systems are going to make all sorts of recommendations. They're going to make all sorts of, you know, you're going to be able to answer all sorts of complex questions. But how do you verify that that actually worked, right? What's the feedback mechanism to say before it was like this and after, you know, this is what's going on, right? Um, so the example here is just, you know, you enable DFS channels, and the before and after on client Wi-Fi performance is a 10% improvement, as a, as a simple example. 
So all right, um, this is probably the only complicated looking thing that, <laughs> that will be on here. But you know, I wanted to get into like, a little bit under the covers of how this stuff works and, and what you need to actually do to make it work. So I'm going to start with part one, which is answering complex questions. Right? So like that Skype for Business example I, I, I gave. Right? So you know, the simple example I'm going to start with is think about a single client, right? you know, somebody's laptop or phone, making a Skype for Business call. And what the question we want to answer is, how does that correlate with wireless? Right? And so what we would collect is, does um, this thing have a laser? It does. Where is it? The laser button. <laughs> this guy? Yeah. That was it. Just. I don't see it. You're... Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> OK. Oh, you have a better laser? <laughs> that's, that's what you call a laser, G2. Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> there you go. All right. Here, give me, give, me, give, give me this one. What's that? We're going to dual laser. We got people on both sides, man. <laughs> so there you go. I, get, I get the shitty, they're crappy on laser. <laughs> okay. So, you know, as I said, single client, just a very simple example here. Whoops. Um, we're going to measure the MOS score, right? Or we're going to track the MOS score. We're, at the same time as that, we're going to track what access point he's connected to. We're going to track what channel he's on what his signal-to-noise ratio is and what the channel utilization on his AP is, right? And so you start with an in-context time series data, right? So the, all that means is that, you know, think of this as like 12 o'clock, this is 12.05, this is 12.10 or whatever. And each time, we're going to collect all of this in-context data. Um, so, you know, at 12 o'clock or at T1, you know, he's got good MOS score, uh, he's on 5 gigahertz, um, you know, the channel utilization is, is, is low, right? And somewhere in the middle, he switches over, his MOS score turns really bad, and, you know, he's on 2.4 gigahertz, right? So that's kind of the raw data that you start with, but that's, that's important, because garbage in, garbage out with any of these systems, right? So then you say, okay, well, let's start to do some analysis on this data and some correlation, right? So what were the good times? So let, let's pick apart the good times for this client. And let's see what symptoms and attributes that I'm measuring coincided with the good times, and what symptoms and attributes co uh, coincided with the bad times, right? And so you can see here that you know it's good, bad. You know, if, if you were just to eyeball it, right? It's like okay, clearly when he switched over to channel 11, channel utilization popped up, and, and that, that became bad. So you know, you start with raw data that's collected from the right places, and then you start correlating and you start analyzing patterns. But to really understand analytics, right, and just in general, you need to generalize this stuff to, this is a simple five-dimensional example, right? So, you know, MOS score is one dimension, the access point is one dimension, channel is one dimension. But that's how you have to start thinking about this stuff. So, in reality, you know, maybe operating system matters, right? Maybe that's going to correlate with performance. Maybe things like, um, you know, the building he's in matters. Maybe uh, whether, you know, what codec is being used on this call matters, you know, and so on and so forth. So when you really sort of boil this down, this is probably more like hundreds or, you know, thousands possibly even of, d of actual dimensions, right? So, you know, when you think about dimensions, you think about, you know, you try and visual, it's, it's obviously hard to visualize a hundred dimensional space, right? But Think about it a little bit as, okay, if I fix any of these dimensions, right, one easier way to think about it is, you know, how do these things vary when I fix it? When I fix AP, right, what do I notice about performance, right? When I fix channel, what do I notice about performance? So you can start thinking about it there in terms of fixing single dimensions, but in actuality, this is like a multi-dimensional space that you need to think about, right? The other thing to also think about is this notion of a solution space. So what that entails is there's like an underlying metric here that we care about. So performance is, is the example here, or MOS score, right? So you can think of performance, and you, know, you can think of a solution space as, you know, this, if, if I plot performance in this 100-dimensional space, it has peaks, it has valleys, it kind of goes all over the place. And maybe I want to look at the parts of the space that you know, have peak perform or has maximized that metric versus minimize that metric, right? But 
So far, everything I've talked about is just kind of the description of the space and correlation to just even generate it. And part one of this is, okay, I want to ask a question about what that space looks like, but I know what the question is. I know that I want to ask about the 10th floor, I want to ask about VLAN 20, I want to ask about this AP or whatever, and that's the question that I'm asking. But if you really think about it, most of the time you're not going to know what, what question to even ask, right? If you have 500 sites around the world, if you have you know, 1,000 APs at each site, if you have 10,000 clients or whatever, how do you know where to look to even start? So that's kind of where we bring, bring ourselves to the next section, right? Is something to automatically look through this big multi-dimensional space or the solution space for me and sort of tell me what is interesting, right? So you tell me. Well, one of the things I forgot to mention up front is that Anand definitely wants to take questions throughout. So if you have questions, raise your hand, toss the mic ball. Yeah, that's true. If the what? The box. The box ball. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, well I'm assuming everybody understands perfectly, <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, any, any questions, you know, please interrupt. One of the things I wanted to point out when I saw this slide that Anand did was everything he just showed, this, all these dimensions, that is for each individual client on a network, wired or wireless. So the amount of, uh, there's a lot of discussions we have internally with, hey, let's just do this. And then the discussion is, well, that takes X amount of computing power and memory and storage. So there's definitely costs, I don't mean literal costs, but you know, there's processing costs to just each little dimension. So it, it's a, the data sets are quite incredible. Yep. I mean, so yeah, clients is another dimension, right? Clients, time, as I said, operating system, channel, AP, et cetera, et cetera, all of these things. And then everything on the wire, too. Yep. DNS, DHCP, uh, WAN. VLANs, all that kind of stuff. So, and, and even the metric that you're looking at, right? I just used Wi-Fi or uh, Skype for Business Performance as, a, as an example. But you could think about DNS. You could think about you know, um, some other application. You can think about Radius. You can think about Wi-Fi. And all Pokemon that. Go, we're tracking Pokemon. that. There you go, exactly. Performance matters. Um, so, you know, part one was describing the solution space and being able to answer and query that solution space and visualize the answer for it. Part two is really you tell me. I don't know what question I want to ask. You tell me what's interesting about my system, right? And the underlying thing here is something we call an objective function, right? So it's basically just a mathematical way of saying what is important to you. So I'm going to surface some insight to you but I should know that that's actually something you care about, right? And how do I sort of, uh, you know, characterize that? And so the example I'll use, you know, just go back to our favorite movie, movie streaming service, right? Um, the movie recommendation engine, what, like what is it actually doing under the cover, right? So what it's doing is it's saying that, you know, you have watched these sets of movies in the past. Right? And those movies have a bunch of characteristics. They have you know, the genre of the movies. Is it horror? Is it comedy and all that? It has you know, who, who are the stars in it, right? Um, you know, where are you located? Right? Are you in San Francisco? Are you in you know, Minnesota? Um, you know, it has all of this information about, about these movies, right? the length of the movie, all, the, all this kind of stuff. Right? And the way to think about that is think about the dimensional space I talked about in the previous slide. So genre is one axis, right? Uh, uh, major star is another axis. Maybe supporting actor is another axis. Location is another axis. And so you have, a, again, like a multi-dimensional space that describes each movie that you've watched. So think about each movie that you've watched as like a data point in that multi-dimensional space. And under the cover, think about all the movies everybody else has watched on Netflix as other data points in that multi-dimensional space. And the objective function defined by the Netflix recommendation engine is similarity. It wants to give you stuff that's as similar to your profile as possible, right? So it's going to try and find the movies that cl are closest to the movies that you watched across all these different dimensions, right? So that's the objective. And then there's a bunch of magic that happens. Uh, and then the output is movies that, you, you know, that are similar to what, what you watched. And you know, a lot of the times, uh, I don't know about your guys' experience, but it's pretty good, I find, right? In terms of recommending things that, that, um, that are interesting. Um, you know, this is where you know, the buzzword of machine learning comes in, which you're, you've probably heard a lot of. Um, 
I'll kind of skip like getting into details about machine learning because then otherwise we'll be here for <laughs> another hour. Um, but you know, at a very, very high level, just think about machine learning as a way to search that multi-dimensional solution space by using data points, by using data, right? Or big data as, as people call it, right? Um, so that's, that's basically, it, it's one such algorithm. You, there's lots of other algorithms you can use as well, but you know, that, that's an example of it. So what is an objective function, just to kind of bring it back to networking a little bit, what, what does an example objective function for a networking product look like? So here's just an example. Um, you know, I think what we would care about, you know, going back to the original problem of user experience on the access network, is something like, you know, where are, the mo where are most of my problems? So where are there a high number of client hours of performance problems that can even be mitigated? Right? And then there's probably a side thing here about actionability. Right? Um, you know, in certain environments, certain things are actionable. In other environments, they're not. Right? So if you have a transformer next to your school and um, that's you know, causing a lot of noise, maybe it's not actionable for me to keep telling you about noise problems on, on your access points because you can't get rid of that transformer. Right? Uh, on the other hand, you know, um, maybe in other environments, if it's a microwave or something like that causing noise, then it is actionable. The third part of this is how do you verify you know, so all these recommendations are made, all these complex questions, you know, how, how do you verify this stuff? And the key there is really measuring good baselines or building good baselines, right? So you wanna make sure you're doing apples to apples measurements. So in any kind of network, what matters is the usage level, right? So obviously the baseline at the, in, during the morning is different from the one in the middle of the day, is different from the one on the weekend or the night just because of the number of people that are trying to use this particular service, right? Um, and so you want to fix that. You want to evaluate the same metric everywhere, and you want to track the baselines across multiple dimensions. So I want to track a baseline for each location of my environment. I want to track a baseline for each VLAN in my environment, and so on, right? Because by building the good baseline, what I can then do is any kind of fix that I make I can annotate that baseline or have the baseline be annotated automatically and basically track the before and after of, wh of what happened so I can actually verify that something, something good is happening or bad. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's more qualitative things too, right? So in the noise example, right? Suppose there's a microwave next to an AP and we say, okay, you know, if you get rid of the noise there, you can mitigate this many client hours of bad Wi-Fi. It may be that after you mitigated it, like you, you threw the microwave away or something like that, the problem is still there. Performance is just as bad as before. But maybe the root cause of that performance changed. Maybe now, now that you've gotten rid of the noise, the real problem was actually something else, bad coverage in that area or something like that, right? And that's what actually you needed to do. So, you know, why hasn't this been done before, right? You know, with all the products that, you know, you, you mentioned a GT and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I think one big aspect of this is that the problem is more acute today. So, you know, because 15 years ago, everything was, you know, you had a company issued laptop that would be connected to an ethernet jack and it would be accessing SharePoint, which is on premise, right? Today, you have any kind of device you want to bring in, right? Um, they're all connecting over wireless, most of them, I mean, <laughs> You know, given the, the crowd here or whatever, that's, that's, that's clear. And um, they're accessing stuff on premise, they're accessing stuff in the cloud, they're accessing unified communication applications and all of that. And the expectation is that the performance should be as good as if, if it's on a laptop. From a technology perspective, there are a lot of open source web, web scale technologies available today. Uh, and big data processing engines and databases that also make this possible. So think Apache Cassandra, Elasticsearch, uh, Apache Spark. All of these things are now open sourced and can be used. But the key is you need the right you know, set of skills to sort of say, on the one hand, I have networking domain knowledge to say that I know exactly how you know, TCP works, I know how Radius works, and I can find issues going on with any of those protocols. But on the other hand, you also need data expertise and UI expertise. And you need to and software expertise and kind of put it all together to build uh, this kind of a system. 
I would say anecdotally, my experience coming from a hardware vendor to Nyansa is that a lot of it is very people oriented. So we have people that are called data scientists. I thought that was just when we wanted to make fun of somebody, we'd call them that. But it's actually a real job, and these people have degrees in this, right? Yeah, and definitely. so what's fun for me is being a Wi-Fi guy is I go to them, and I go to them routinely and say, I want to know this. Can we extract this? And they figure out ways to pull that out by correlating data in ways that, that we haven't even done yet. So, so when I looked at this and I talked to Anna about why hasn't this been done, putting a dedicated team together for the whole sole purpose to work on a campus network to get this data, and in my, my knowledge, hasn't been done. And that's, that's what these guys and gals that we have do. I actually thought of this just now. I want you guys to tell me what you would want to see. You guys can email me, gt at niansa.com. Imagine you have all this data that just sits there, and I do this in, you know, night in the shower and stuff, is <laughs> you have a picture already, like you're, whatever. <laughs> that, you know, that you're thinking about, you, what do you want to see out of a network? What if you had infinite packet captures and a whole bunch of Peter McKenzie's looking at them? What is it that you would want to see? Because tell me that, I would like to know, um, because that's what's going to help make our product better. Anyway, that's a whole pitch. Sorry, I've interrupted you, sir. <laughs> no problem. It's a good segue. Thanks, man. <laughs> so it's a good segue to how do you actually turn this stuff into the product, into a product, right? And so so far, I've been kind of general. Um, you know, what I've said can apply to any any kind of raw data and processing that raw data and so on. Um, but you know, we do have a product. It's called Voyance, and. Hopefully, you know, in the next couple of slides, it was going to be awkward for me to go back and forth on a demo. So I just kind of took screenshots from the product to show, show you guys. But, you know, let's start with answering complex questions, right? And how does that look like in the product, right? So if you want to answer a question like, what does ARP connectivity look like across my different locations, right? Uh, how, oh, sorry. And how about, there we go. And how about wired versus wireless clients, right? You can do that in the product. So basically, you know, it's hard to see, but this is you know, evaluating clients not being able to connect due to, uh, due to ARP, right? that specific problem, and collecting the requisite data and correlating it in order to even be able to figure it out. And then what this is, is actually a comparison across different locations of what percentage of clients are actually having that problem in each of those locations. And you can see in this particular example, there's one that clearly stands out. Another example would be, what are the root causes of all of the client issues, or client Wi-Fi issues in my environment? Uh, and how do they sort of break out, right? So again, very hard to see. There's about, so what, what this says is there's about 70,000 client hours of poor Wi-Fi that occurred in your enterprise or university across the last week. Now for each of those client hours, there were a particular set of symptoms that correlated at the same time. So when they were having bad Wi-Fi performance, um, you know, did they have high layer two retransmissions? Were they connected to an AP and an RF profile which had DFS channels enabled? Were they connected to an AP which had high noise on it? Were they uh, connected to an AP with, where rogues were interfering with that AP? And so on. And so we collect that data and we actually quantify what percentage of all of those client hours fell under this particular symptom set, right? So in this case, I think it was like 20% or 30% or something. You know, that's the most common thing. You could see that, you know, the third most common one in this particular environment, interestingly, was noise, right? And it affected 12% of the client hours, right? So this is now data that's telling you, and actually being able to quantify, what percentage of my client Wi-Fi issues in my environment are because of noise? And you're able to sort of take anecdotal notes of like, hey, if we fix the noise problem, we're going to fix all of our problems. And in this case, it's not. Sorry, go ahead. A question on that. Yeah. Uh, I can see how you gather that information, but how do you get aware to go along with it? You know when and what, but how do you tie that to aware to fix it? Physical location? Yeah. So, so it's the AP that they're connected to, right? That, that's our notion of where. Uh, because what, what we collect in terms of raw data is we collect information from the wireless controller, we collect live data and do deep packet inspection on it as well, right? And so for our, our only notion of where is what the controller tells us, and that's the uh, AP association. So if, if you had a wing and 
14 VAPs were there, would that be 14 sets of problems, or does that get extracted up to a higher level to say it's the wing? It, it, the answer is either. So you can look at the AP level, or you guys can create a group. Let's say you want to do a test plan of six of those 14 APs. You, within Voyance, you don't have to mess with your controller. Within Voyance, you just make a little group. And then it'll just be you know, that custom analysis for that group that you chose. So AP or you know, a whole site or a campus, whatever you choose. But, but you know, one, one key thing is actually, even the question of where, the general form of that is what, like a dimension again, right? Because it could be a VLAN. It could be an SSID, it could be an operating system, it could be anything that you want to look at it from that perspective. So. so, okay, so this is answering complex questions. How about the next part? How about the, the you tell me part, right? And yeah, that's hard to see as well. It just sort of <laughs> highlights the word client hours because I think as I talked about yesterday, in order to do a you tell me, you need an objective function, right? Something that we think will be interesting for you to see, right? And so, you know, one example of that, so this, this example is um, a client-based uh, insight that's generated inside the product. We're basically, you know, I don't want to wait for users to phone me with problems. You tell me, again, from a, from a product perspective, who's having a problem and how to fix it. And so in the product, we actually look at every single client transaction, right? Every single client, all the transactions they go through. Uh, and we kind of are able to see who's been having a problem over and over and over and over again. So now that client could have phoned in and said, hey, I can't connect or like with an explicit problem. Or because we've kind of surfaced this to you without even that prompting, it's like, you know, hard to read, sorry. Um, but what this says is, as, as an example here, this client was on radius in 124 different hours over the last two weeks. In all 124 of those hours, he couldn't connect, right? So that's an opportunity to say, let me contact this user and say, hey, we've been noticing, especially if it's like a VIP user or something like that, we've been noticing that you've been having these problems. Let's, let's work together and try and fix it. I just right? have a quick question on that. How many of you have, heard, have felt a shift within IT from reactive to proactive? <coughs> Because that's definitely something we're hearing from a lot of our customers, which is, which is, you know, we don't want to just fix it after the fact. We actually want it fixed before the users, before IT, before other people even know. Yes, sir. But how many now that IT is going that way is actually causing more problems? So the question was, how many being proactive is causing more problems? Can you give me an example? Uh, I've been now two and a half weeks without a PC. Yeah. Two and a half weeks without a PC. Keith's giving them away. Thanks to our IT department, I've been two and a half weeks without a PC and still fighting trying to get network issues. So it seems like the more tools we're incorporating to assist us is more tools that's causing our conflicts. Yeah, yeah okay. so, so, so part of this is, you know, you don't want yet another tool, right? I mean, so, so some of the points here is that, you know, which is why the verify is so important at the end of this, right? You want to be able to get these insights, get these proactive insights. But if you're not seeing this actually working in practice, if it's not actually doing anything for you, then it's probably going to just create more problems for you, right? So, you know, false positives and all that kind of stuff, you want to be able to control that. And that's, that's where that verify part, part comes in. But, you know, so th this is a client example, but this is all based on some kind of raw data, right? So the raw data in question over here, it's, it's something we call an event timeline, but the idea is in the product for every single client, we look at all their connectivity transactions, so association, authentication, IP, all that kind of stuff, and we can, tr we can notice you know, over and over again this guy fails with radius. And it's not just over like an hour, this is over like several like, weeks basically, right? And so this is, this is one way to surface. From a network engineering perspective, so that was, those are single clients, right? But from a network engineering, you can have the same kind of thing, right? Um, you know, we call this sort of a recommendation, a remediation recommendation engine, right? So the idea here is that we're gonna recommend to you, you know, so the, the question here is what actions can I take to improve overall client experience? Recommend me something, right? And so the idea here is, okay, you know, this example over here is if you remove the rogue APs, near this particular AP, right, and you can identify them, 
you can mitigate 1,500 client hours of poor Skype for business performance, right? And the reason we even said that is because we start with the collection and correlation of the data. We collect the fact that over the last week, all these people had Skype for business issues, and at the same time they had Skype for business issues, there was a rogue AP interfering on the APs that they were connected to, right? And based on that, we flipped the question to even be able to recommend to you to say, you weren't even thinking about this, um, but if you can do this fix, you can potentially mitigate all of this, right? The, the, the example here is, um, the highlighted one is, uh, turn off 2.4 gigahertz radios near a particular you know, AP, I think it's like 122 dot something or whatever, right? And by doing that, you can mitigate 600 client hours of poor Wi-Fi performance, right? Now, where that comes from is, as I said, we're, we're constantly monitoring all of these kind of uh, client issues, what symptoms, attributes correlate with that. But then you can also visualize that and sort of map that onto your different locations. So this is sort of an evidence piece for this, right? So what this is showing you is these, these are your APs, right? So there are 3,000 APs in this particular environment, right? But this particular root cause of co-channel interference on 2.4 happening while clients were having poor Wi-Fi performance, these are the APs where that showed up, right? So you can notice like little clusters of APs and their size, and that's basically a visualization of how many client hours of problems mapped onto those particular APs, right? And so the evidence here is that in this little cluster of APs, there are 600 client hours or thereabouts of poor Wi-Fi performance that at the same time they were having poor Wi-Fi performance, the AP that they were connected to had co-channel interference on 2.4 gigahertz. So that's what enables flipping the question, as I say, and recommending to you without prompting why don't you try turning off 2.4 gigahertz near these APs? You can solve these problems, right? And again, this is just a wireless example, but you know, this could be, why don't you mitigate DNS latency on this VLAN? And that can mitigate like, these other issues or other, other problems. Finally, um, verify, right? So how do you, how do you verify? So as, as I said, you know, with any kind of change that you make, you always want to keep track of what the before was, what the after was, um, controlling for usage, controlling for the measurements that you or the, the measurements that you take on both sides, so that you can isolate the change and the effect of what what change that you made. Right. So here's an example of, you know, Wi-Fi performance in that particular AP group where the fix was made, the annotation of what fix was made, and sort of the before and after comparison. How many of you have ever changed a setting on a Wi-Fi system, pr thinking it would help? Why is Jake Snyder the first guy in his hand oh, raised? <laughs> We've all done it, right? I mean, we all get educated. We all feel like we're pretty smart in Wi-Fi. But one of the things that attracted me to looking, you know, why I saw this product is that it validates our existence. I was at a customer and I said they were at 20, 40 megahertz. And I said, let's go to 20. I feel like I, you know, I see some issues going on. Let's go to 20. And because of this annotation feature, we saw that it improved the network 35%. End users had a 35%, sorry, 35% of end users had a better Wi-Fi experience not having congestion than before. And before it was like, you know, you talk to people, hey, does it feel better? Does it look better? Call me if the help desk calls you. There's a lot of complexity there, but Voyance actually tells it for you. Anywhere in the stack, DNS, DHCP, whatever. So, so, so one final, just to conclude, right, you know, where, where I started, you know, is a lot of people are going to talk about analytics, right? Uh -huh. And, you know, products that have analytics and all that kind of stuff. But the frame of reference you should use to really make this useful for you is, you know analytics from the products that, you know, we all use, right? Whether it's your iPhone and Siri or Netflix or Google or Uber, the self-driving cars, all that kind of stuff. That's analytics, right? And so, you know, if, if you guys hear, <laughs> like products or whatever, that, that's like a good frame of reference or a rule of thumb to, to see. Is, that, is this like those products? Um, and you know, so I've kind of drawn out the spectrum here, as I said, right? You know, you start from raw data, which is just the basic stuff, your CLI you can think of, or like all the sources that I talked about initially. And on the right side is analytics, right, as, as kind of I've defined it. And you know, there's a dividing line. And so, you know, we, we talked about sort of 
the products currently today, and most even like a lot of new products as well, right? They kind of focus in around in this region, right? Monitoring, summarization, indexing, querying, all that kind of stuff. But you know, where we need to get to, right, for analytics to really solve problems, save time, right, enable like people like you guys to do, you know, uh, to be more effective or whatever, right, uh, with lesser resources, is um, you know, the ability for a system to look at that you know, complex, multi-dimensional space that I talked about before, search it for you, and sort of surface insights. Right? But uh, so that's, that's kind of what I had. Uh, so any, any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Uh... <laughs> so, uh... What's the behind the scene uh, you're using? Is it cloud-based? Yeah, so, so the product is cloud-based, but we actually have a hybrid, what we call a hybrid SaaS version, where it can actually be deployed on-premise as well if you don't want any personally identifiable data to leave on-premise. Um, but you know, updates and stuff like that come from the cloud, and so it's all sort of put, put together. Right? So that's, that's, that's how it works. The next question was right here, this gentleman up front. Right here, sir. Yeah, does it have a uh, user-friendly uh, GUI, or can you collect collect analytics for non-technical people, such as uh, like a sales marketing department? Yeah. So, so the thing is, the product has to work at different to different use cases or different personas, right? So, you can think of help desk as being pretty simplified and caring about individual clients. You can think of network operations as only caring about real-time data. Network engineering or architecture caring about longer-term trends. CIOs caring about you know, even higher-level bubbled-up things about you know, productivity or BI or anything like that. So in the product, the idea is to have different, um, different UI, different like, role-based, basically. And, to and apply to different yeah, we've also got the feature request for a kind of a user-serviceable dashboard whether that is the manager of a store or a student on campus, that they could pull up an app or pull up a browser and kind of see what's the network doing today. We had requests for, you know, what's the, where's the best Wi-Fi on campus right now? And have some sort of a, a feature that that would push out to the end users. So most definitely, I think. That would be Lee's office. Sir? <laughs> Lee's office. Lee's office. Lee's office. There's a question way back there. That's a long throw. Here we go. Heads up, everybody, because this is going to go bad. Yeah. Now, uh, Mike on a drone. Now we have a reason for a drone. <laughs> so um, when, you, when the system makes a recommendation, is there a feature where, say, you have that issue where you had uh, in that area change a channel or turn off 2.4, yep. and you'd make that change? Is there a way in the system where, you know, two months down, you have the same type of experience where that feedback can come back in and say, hey, two months ago we had that issue, we made this change. Yeah, absolutely. So the idea is for you to be able to pin or track certain things that you actually take action on. Right? So we're going to recommend you all sorts of stuff and try and order it by things like client hours, you know, where you can mitigate the most, as well as you know, what other people are doing. Right? So one of the advantages of being in the cloud, or even for the hybrid version, right, is we see across all, all different customers. So we see what people are actually doing. And so you know, maybe the most actionable thing, or most popular action to take is to shut off 2.4 gigahertz. And so maybe those recommendations will bubble up to the top because of the actionability side of it right? versus, uh, versus other stuff. But yeah. Any other questions? Pretty close to the mic. <laughs> only questions only on this side. <laughs> um, how does Nanza define a good Wi-Fi experience, and is that customizable? No. So um, we we sort of use a rule of thumb, right, to say, okay, you know, the controller is telling us data about a client, right? It's telling us signal to noise ratio, how much traffic, how many layer two retransmits, and things like that. So we define a metric for you. So we say, okay, good client experience, just as one example. Right, the same thing applies to radius, ARP, all that kind of latency, all that kind of stuff, right? But we're going to decide, okay, if the guy has, you know, based on best practices, less than this, you know, signal to noise ratio, less than, you know, higher than these layer two retransmits, or whatever, and that persists over an hour, right, or the better part of an hour, then we're going to say this guy had bad client experience. 
But the key to not making it customizable, or the reason we don't, is because we want to take the exact same measurements everywhere, right? Both in your environment as well as across other customer environments. So something I, I haven't talked about is the fact that, or I, I briefly mentioned it in terms of seeing across all customers. But you know, in the product, you can actually decide or like figure out, is my baseline even good or bad? Right? So there's one question about baselining your environment and finding deviations within your own environment. But suppose you start off at a really high baseline level. Right? You know, 30% of your clients have poor Wi-Fi or something like that. Right? Is that good? You know, should you spend time trying to bring 30 to, let's say, 22%? Or what's the right number? Right? And because we take the same measurements and evaluate the same metric everywhere, we can actually tell you that, you know what? You're in an enterprise environment. You're running Cisco. And you have around 5,000 simultaneous clients use your system. With other customers with that profile, the, num the right number to be at, or the industry benchmark, is you know, 31%. And so you guys are fine at 20%. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's how it goes. Well, thank you very much. We, Thanks. We Thanks, love sir. learning. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.